evolution. It's fun stuff. However, this is a pretty big theory and there are a lot of different parts to it. So let's try and understand the very basics about what evolution is about. The theory of evolution has been around since 1859 and well, a lot's happened since then. So if we want to understand this, there's a couple things we want to talk about. We're going to start talking about with what is evolution in a very general sense. We'll go over a few key concepts, some terms that you're going to want to pay attention to and be able to define by the end of this module. Then we'll talk about deep similarity. And lastly, some resources for you to follow along if you'd like to understand things a little bit better. But first, what even is evolution? Obviously, we are talking about biology. We're talking about living organisms. And within the field of biology, there's a lot of different subfields. If you want to think about it broadly, there are two major subfields. We have molecular biology. So this is looking at cells and what is happening within them. What are the molecules doing? We're talking a really small level. Molecular biologists might be talking about the molecules. They might be looking at DNA. They might be looking at organelles, or they could even be looking at the cellular or tissue level. But really, we're looking at pretty small stuff. We're thinking really tiny within a single organism. Evolutionary biology takes the opposite approach. Now we're looking at the evolutionary processes that produced the diversity of life. Evolutionary biology, by and large, is looking at things from a really big perspective, and it's trying to figure out how did all of this come to be. In molecular biology, you tend to see a lot of people use proximate reasoning. What is happening right now? And in evolutionary biology, you're going to find ultimate reasoning more common. Why did this come to be in the first place? So if we go back to our diagram, looking at a couple of the different subfields within biology, we can broadly um, split them up like this. M molecular biology is here at the top, and then over here we have uh, evolutionary biology at the bottom. What's interesting is genetics is actually used by both of them. We use genetics a lot of the time to help us figure out who's more closely related to whom. And of course, bioethics, it happens to be down in the bottom part of this chart, but that really applies to everyone. When we're talking about evolutionary biology, we're really trying to think about how life came to be. Evolution explains the observations we can see in living organisms. So it uh, explains the changes we see between different species that are closely related. If you, you could compare wolves to domesticated dogs. But it also helps us understand what happened in the fossil record. So we can compare a living organism today with a fossil that we think is its ancestor. Evolution tells us about all of that but just think about how many species exist. That's a lot to explain. And that's one of the reasons why there's just so many different concepts within evolution. So let's talk about a few that are important. So some of the important questions we, we try to ask here are first, how are living organisms related to each other? We spend a lot of time on ta taxonomy and phylogeny. We're trying to figure out who is more closely related to whom. Because once we know the pattern of how different species are related, then we can get at the process. What happened? Why did something evolve this way? But of course, we first need to know this pattern of how things are related. We can also look at how did life evolve over time? Especially when we have a good fossil record, we can see the progression from one form to a different form in the fossil record. This picture here shows the evolution of whales. Whales, um, of course, live in the ocean, but they came from a, um, a land-dwelling mammalian ancestor. So whale ancestors did have four limbs, and you can actually see um, tiny little pelvis and sometimes um, re residual limbs within whale bodies. Um, when we put all life on a single tree together, it, it will look like this. And you'll notice that certain parts of the tree are much deeper. Um, our bacteria and archaea are much, much older than things such as mammals that are much more recently derived. There's also a few important keywords that you want to be aware of and paying attention to when you learn about evolution. There are microevolution and macroevolution. Micro, of course, means small. Macro is large. So we... We think about evolution slightly differently depending on the time scale. There's different things we talk about and notice when we're talking on the micro or the small level versus the macro or the large level. It's also important to think about adaptation, natural selection, and the forces of evolution. By the end of this unit, make sure you can define all of these terms. 
And of course, because we are talking about so many different organisms, it is important to think about biological classification. This just helps us organize the immense number of species that are out there. Um, so we just organize groups into progressively smaller ones. At the top is life. Then we have domains. Within a domain, there are multiple kingdoms. Then you have a phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. You do want to pay attention to which level that you're talking about. Um, if we're talking about primates, primates is an order that is order primates. So, and we are within class mammalia. And then there are other groups within primates. So you might want to talk about um, family hominidae, the, the great apes. Um, if it helps you uh, keep this remembered, this diagram just has it flipped. Now we have our species at the top, our kingdom at the bottom. Um, if you want to, like a mnemonic to help you remember, it's keeping precious creatures organized for grumpy scientists. And yeah, I'm one of those grumpy scientists. Remember, when we are talking about species, that most specific level, we use binomial nomenclature. This was created, created by Linnaeus, and binomial, of course, means two names. We have our genus and our species. Um, we make sure both of them are italicized. We capitalize the genus name, but the species name is not. Um, here are a couple examples, Homo sapiens, Tarsius, Tumpara, and Pan paniscus. Please note the format. Genus is capitalized, species is not all italicized. Using this specific format is a note to other scientists that you know what you're talking about. This is part of scientific code switching, code switching to make sure you communicate that you understand what's going on. Of course, when we're talking about species, there is an estimated 8.7 million species wide, worldwide. Um, unfortunately, many of them are going extinct. It's, that's our fault. Um, but as of yet, we've only officially described 1.2 million. So many of these species will actually go extinct before we have the chances to describe them at all. Another thing we like to talk about with evolution is this idea of deep similarity. Deep similarity means that there is a unity of composition or that there's the same basic body plan for all living organisms. We'll talk more about this when we get to Darwin, but we see a couple of similar things for all life. All living things use DNA as our hereditary material. This is the, these are the molecules that we use to encode um, the characteristics that we pass on to our offspring. And this is true for all living organisms. We also all have the same cellular structure. And we also have the same central dogma. We use DNA, we transcribe that into RNA, and that, or translate that into RNA, and then transcribe that into amino acids. And we, because we have this similar feature, we can use DNA to compare any living organisms to see how similar they are. So if we use this for humans, we're about 99.9 .9 similar to other humans. We're about 98% similar to chimpanzees, 90% similar to your cat, 85% uh, similar to mice, 80% similar to cows, 61% similar to fruit flies. You know, we are fairly different from fruit flies if you're just looking at a macro level, but you'll notice that a lot of it is similar just due to the fact that we have the same basic cellular processes. We're actually 60% similar to chicken. It's a little weird that we are more similar to a fruit fly than a chicken, but this is probably more reflection of the fact that chickens are kind of weird. They are heavily adapted for flight, so that is why they might appear more different just using this, um, this measure. Um, we're also about 60% similar to a banana, an inanimate object. <gasps> We, of course, can look backwards in time and try and reconstruct what we think life looked um, in the past. And what's kind of interesting is the farther back you go, there's actually less and less life. Um, but that's because it had yet to evolve. And we'll talk more once we get to macroevolution in the fossil record. There is, of course, a lot going on in evolution. I think it's fascinating, but if you're learning it for the first time, it can be a little overwhelming. So here are a couple of resources that you can use um, at, to help check yourself and reinforce many of these concepts. The first place I would go is is it this website by Berkeley called Evolution 101. You can see they have a couple different sections here. So you can go to Introduction to 
evolution, a history of life. You can look at the different mechanisms, the process of how evolution happens or microevolution, speciation, macroevolution, and the big issues. I highly recommend going to each of these pages as we cover these different topics. Another plate great place to go is Khan Academy. They have a unit on evolution and the tree of life. You notice they have a couple different sections within here and there are different um, units within each section. This is organized a little bit differently than Berkeley Evolution 101. So I highly recommend that you check both out and figure out which one makes more sense to you. So can you explain? What does evolution try and explain? And what are some of the important concepts? <music>